these materials have been completely brought up to date uh, over the course of the last uh, six weeks or so, anticipatory of this session today. It was 2019 when I last gave this programme, and clearly there's been um, a lot of water under the bridge in that time. So the order of business really is to uh, just take you through very quickly, as you can see here on the right, the these are categories that we're going to be discussing today. Um, the programme is designed to be delimited to business immigration and um, designed to actually deliver uh, a practical set of tools for you to be able to convert the theoretical into practical as a result of the way that um, I have kind of manifested my knowledge and know-how in this niche over the last, well, 30 years now since I've been doing it. Um, so if you'll see here on the right, we're going to look at uh, the visitor visa in the context of those folks who come to Hong Kong to undertake business visits. And uh, then we'll talk about employment visas, both in the context of the general employment policy, um, which was uh, recently extended in terms of the eligible nationals that can participate uh, in the general employment policy, that is who can get employment visas, uh, all the usual suspects, uh, jurisdictions, nationalities, obviously, uh, could qualify under the general employment policy. But uh, as a result of uh, the chief executive's policy uh, address on the 25th of October, uh, we now understand that employment visas will be available to Vietnamese nationals, Laotian nationals, and also Nepalese nationals, which was never the situation previously. Um, the equivalency of the employment visa under the general employment policy for uh, Chinese nationals resident on the mainland is called the Admission Scheme for Mainland Talents and Professionals. We'll go through that. Uh, and then there is a specific visa that enables both Chinese nationals and foreign nationals to come to Hong Kong for the purposes of receiving training in Hong Kong. Um, so that'll be the training visa. We do have uh, the ability for foreign nationals who come to Hong Kong as students who then graduate with a degree to be able to qualify under a program called the Immigration Arrangements for Non-Local Graduates, uh, both as uh, a fresh graduate and also as a returning graduate. I'll, I'll get into the nitty gritty of that when we come to the relevant part of the presentation. Um, also on October 25th, the Chief Executive announced that there's going to be a new pilot program that relates to vocational professionals now. This, I understand, is going to involve uh, student visa holders who study for two-year programs under uh, courses that are accredited by the Vocational Training Council. And then they will be granted a one-year employment visa to be able to seek to work in Hong Kong after they graduated um, under the two-year vocational education that will be pursuing here. This is brand new. The immigration arrangement for non-local graduates always required a, a degree postgraduate qualification, a graduate or a postgraduate qualification to be able to uh, get this sort of simple pathway into uh, employment permissions in Hong Kong. But there is this new program, details to be announced uh, that relates to vocational professionals rather than graduate professionals. I'll then move into business investment visa as an entrepreneur. Uh, again, this is a general employment policy uh, program. And then we'll talk about passive investment for residents. Uh, that's the capital investment entrance scheme, which was uh, originally suspended in 2015. But again, on October 25th, the chief executive finally intimated that the qualifying quantum was going to be 30 million Hong Kong dollars and that the qualifying investment asset classes should be similar to those which prevailed uh, up until 2015. But the devil's in the detail. We haven't got the detail yet. So I'll touch upon that only because I simply don't know too much about it, to be frank, at this stage. So then I'll talk about the two types of talent schemes. One's called the Quality Migrant Admission Scheme, which has 
been around forever and a day. It's had some enhancements done to it over the last um, uh, 36 months or so, most recently in 2022. And then I'll take you through the top talent pass scheme, which is the new kid on the block came into play towards the end of last year. This is the um, two million Hong Kong dollar, excuse me, two and a half million Hong Kong dollar prior income, high earner qualification. And then the um, uh, graduates of the top 100 universities, uh, which, uh, according to the policy address, is now going to be increased to the top 184 universities. But I um, don't know what that's going to look like yet. But we'll discuss it when we get to the relevant part in this discussion today. Um, naturally, in the context of business immigration, when folks are going to be coming to take up residence here to pursue uh, their commercial objectives or their career um, opportunities. They'll be wanting to bring their families, so we'll be looking at family visas, both in terms of um, married uh, family members, those who aren't married and where uh, the opportunity for elderly parents to get dependent visas uh, fall into the mix. I'll touch upon briefly the um, supplementary labour scheme, which is the programme that's been around forever and a day. It had some enhancements recently that expanded Expanded the range of relevant jobs that can be um, that can qualify under the supplemental labour scheme. So we'll touch upon that somewhat. Then we'll look at the admission scheme for second generation of Hong Kong permanent residents. Uh, this was a Philip to uh, C.Y. Lung, who decided that uh, his parting shot was going to make it more difficult for um, those foreign nationals, the offspring of those Hong Kong permanent residents who were born overseas to a uh, Hong Kong permanent resident who had acquired foreign nationality at the time of the kid's birth, uh, they used to be able to get right to land. Si Wai Lung said, no, we're not going to enable right to land anymore. In those circumstances, we're going to uh, make them qualify for a new type of visa and then go on to spend seven years in Hong Kong ordinarily resident here to be able to qualify for right of abode in their own right. So it's a sort of an alternate visa pathway uh, for those um, who basically are descendants of, of permanent residents, but they're not actually living in Hong Kong or we're not living in Hong Kong at the time of the child's birth. Uh, there's a program called the Technology Talent Admission Scheme, which is um, really quite delimited to the kind of support that can be offered to larger technology related organizations that um, set up shop in uh, Cyberport and the Hong Kong Science Park uh, won't belabor that too much simply because uh, there's not that much stuff out there. I think I heard recently there was something like 24 approvals since the um, scheme was, uh, was initiated uh, three or four years ago. Um, and the reason why it's not that popular is, frankly, there are much easier ways to get the same sort of immigration status for qualifying folks who would participate under tech tasks if they you know, were otherwise eligible. Uh, then sweeping up towards the end, we'll look at the working holiday visa, which is um, a simple visa that will enable employment and will enable ostensibly some um, cell phone business activity as long as it's non-permanent work or business activity during the time that you hold the working holiday visa. But the Immigration Department has proven to be quite flexible uh, in my experience about converting from working holiday visa status into um, other longer term general employment policy visas such as the business investment visa as an entrepreneur if you started a business while you've held the working holiday visa or uh, you found permanent employment and you're otherwise eligible for uh, an employment visa under the general employment policy. So the working holiday visa does have a role to play. And then given that for long stay foreign nationals, uh, those that are ready to and indeed are, are, are go on to spend seven years uh, being ordinarily resident in Hong Kong, they will go uh, or be eligible for consideration for the right of abode. And uh, we'll look at that and then we'll look at unconditional stay, which is a sort of like the, uh, the young offspring of ride of abode that's more of an administrative immigration convenience than de devolving any rights per se. Um, I'll go through that when we hit the relevant part of the presentation. 
uh, at that time. And then sweeping up right at the very end, we'll look at what happens if cases get refused, both in terms of the first line of appeal, so to speak, which takes the form of a reconsideration application. And then if that um, doesn't work, what you might deem to be final appeal. So that will then basically encompass the entire presentation as regards business immigration in a practical sense 